What's up, peepy peeps? Um, I just came back from the fish shop. I will show you a short clip of what I found. Um, but in a nutshell, I found a pair of Apistogramma McMasteri. So seriously cool species uh, of Apisto um, from the Orinoco Basin in Colombia, man. So proper gangster fish. Uh, I'll show you a short clip in a sec. But they are awesome. So what we're going to do, of course, we're going to have to buy a tank. We're going to have to get it all planted up. We're going to have to, um, yeah. I'll put it in the spare room. Yeah, I'll show you. I'll show you where I'm going to put it. But yeah, so super excited. I'll show you a quick video of um, me geeking out at the fish shop, uh, and then yeah, we'll I'll video the whole process of getting the tank, getting it all set up, uh, buying the fish, and putting them in there. Peace. <laughs> Sup, peepee -pee peeps. Right, so this is the spot that the Epistogramma tank is going to go into. I bought a Aquamanta 35 centimeter cube tank from my local um, fish shop. I will do an unboxing in a minute, but yeah, this is this is exciting. This is where it's going to go. That's my office desk. My lovely view of my back garden, and then this is where it's going to go. So, really excited to get this set up. So, I've taken the tank out of the box, lovely little cube tank, and I have uh, taken the majority of the items out of it as well. So, we've got a very coarse mechanical um, bit of filtration there, so coarse, coarse sponge that presumably slots down here in there. Uh, we've got a nice looking uh, LED. So apparently there's obviously has a white output and a blue output so that'd be interesting. Uh, if I want to put it on moonlight in the evening. A 50 watt Aqua One heater should be nice and sufficient. Uh, the return pump is actually really small. Uh, I don't know what the output is. I wonder if it says on here. 200 it says P, P200, so I'm guessing, what, 200 litres an hour? Yeah, it's absolutely minuscule. Um, you can obviously turn it up or down according to this when I can focus on it. So it'll be interesting to see what that the output is. Again, so with a Pistos, not necessarily requiring too much flow, so it shouldn't be a problem. Uh, what else have I got? I've got some phosphate uh, remover and a very big bag of carbon. What's interesting is in the filter chamber, I'm pretty sure that's everything. Yeah, so it's got a nice back chamber there, um, so I can add add extras if I want to. Um, but what is interesting, there's no bio media. Again, I'm not too fussed. I've, I'll take some um, bio rings from a already set up tank to kickstart the cycle. But yeah, this is it. Oh, sorry, and it also has a, a surprisingly, a glass lid. So it looks open top at the moment, but to stop anything from jumping out, um, yeah, it's um, yeah, surprisingly got a glass lid rather than a cheap plastic one, which I'm quite happy about actually as well. You've got your Aquan logo there. So I've had Aquan tanks in the past, so that that assures me, uh, reassures me that it's going to be good quality. But yeah, also a little tip: it doesn't come with this, but this is a mat that I had from a previous um, tank. I'm going to put it under under this this tank. Simply put, um, even if the, the the tiniest sort of I don't know grain of sand or little bit little bit of dirt or gravel gets under the tank, you fill it with um, water. A lot of pressure being applied to a small small area like that could crack the base. So a nice spongy base is what I'm going to put on it. So I'll cut that to size. So yeah, let's uh, I'll, I'll revisit this when we're a little bit further along. Okay, so we have made some headway. Uh, tank is positioned relatively centrally. I'll cut around that mat so it looks nice. Lights attached, filters in. That was a bit of a wrestling match. Uh, heaters in, um, and so is the media that they gave me as well. So the phosphate and uh, 
um, carbon, phosphate remover and the, and the carbon. Now it is time to add the Colombo Flora Base Pro. That's how we roll, we're pros. Um, quite expensive this stuff, and that's quite a big bag, so I think we're gonna have a relatively deep substrate, but sounds, it's, it's, all, it's all good. Uh, what else are we gonna do? So I bought a lovely log, as you can see. Guarantee you that floats, which will be slightly annoying, but after a while the air will be released and it will sink. But we'll see, I'll start off with a bit of optimism at least. And then I've got some absolutely gangster plants, so some Echinodorus and I think about three types of crypto, which are, I am excited about. So, again, I'll sit at my desk, double check, make sure. Working, working, working really hard, doing stuff. Boom! Casa della Pisto. Really happy with that. Cool, right, let's get all of the stuff in and um, turn the light on. Right, so I just feng shui the log. Really important for me is when you're putting your hardscape in, make sure that you're always leaving yourself enough room to have a sponge and clean the glass around um, the hardscape. There's nothing worse than just constantly hitting um, a rock or a log or something like that with your hand when it's in there. But yeah, I think that, I mean, it, all the reflections making it look a bit rubbish, but I'm sure that'll look nice. It was pretty deep, so I've started quite high up with the substrate in the back yeah you'll see this clearer when the water goes in and then sort of made it a bit shallower at the front right onto the plants what did i get i got cryptocorn walker eye so a relatively easy um plant to keep doesn't grow particularly tall uh for a bit of height at the back i got some echinodorus I'm trying to do this with one hand and film at the same time, it's quite hard. So we can see some brown tips on there, but I'm not too worried about it, and a yellow leaf that I'll cut off. So, Echinodorus bluhuri, bluhuri? Well, that was, that was not well pronounced. So that'll provide some height at the back, that'll look nice. Uh, and then, what else did I get? Cryptocorn Castata, so I've had this one uh, a couple of times, really nice, very slow growing actually for me. Um, but I never use CO2 or anything like that. So that will sit at the front and look quite nice. Uh, Cryptocorn undulatus green. So this is a really easy one to keep. I've got this in a lot of my other tanks, actually. So big fan of that plant. So that will go in there as well. And what was this? I actually thought I only got three, but apparently I got four. Uh, and I've got a Cryptocorn wend, wendy, wend tea. Uh, not had this one before. That's what I like to see. Easy. One. An idiot could keep it. I'm not calling myself an idiot, just saying, you know, my main focus is the fish. So if the plants are, could look after themselves, then that's great. So, I mean, that's already looking banging, isn't it? <laughs> right, I'll get them unpotted and put them in and then start filling this up. Right, plants are in done my best to put the uh, well I put the Echinodorus at the back uh, so they're not blocking the view and then I've got the shorter plants at the front the cryptocorns <laughs> so top-down view I think that's gonna look really good so now that's all that's left to do is fill it with water I haven't even filled it up yet and I'm already debating whether or not to put my blue steel killifish in here as well. Just think that would be really cool. Right, I'm just thinking out loud now. Right, I'll fill it up with water, turn the light on, and then um, show you what it looks like. Okay, so we are, everything is, well, it's all set up basically. All I need to do is turn it on. So bear with me, two secs. It's the first time I'm turning it on. I'm excited. The light won't come on, I should imagine. Okay. Oh. We have water flow. Okay, straight away the pump's quite noisy. Okay, right. Ooh, I've got a bit of kitchen toweling. So there's so much condensation on the glass because I'm using rainwater because the pistos um, love softer water. So I've used the majority of um, this is rainwater. Okay, are we ready? Let's turn the tank light on. Whoa! That is bright. 
That is cool though, isn't it? Right. Oh, the condensation's coming back, so it looks cloudy. It's cloudier than it is. I think that's going to be a lovely little tank. Right. I'll tell you what. I'll wait for it to heat up. Um, you can see all the little bits floating around. I'll wait for it to heat up and the condensation to go away. And then I will take another another video. But that looks like a very nice home for two Epistogramma McMasteri. Cool. Well, that would have taken probably about collectively five minutes on this video. But it has taken me nearly all day. So, um, yeah, well worth it. Actually, while we're here, quickly, let's test the light setting. What's this then? Okay, all, all blue. It's quite a decent blue output. I touch it again. That's just white. Okay, I like that. Could be here forever, couldn't I? Just swiping this off. Uh, and then what else have we got? Off. And then blue and white. Okay. Apart from the pump being a little bit noisy, I think that's absolutely spot on. Cool. All right, I will be back in a couple of hours once this is heated up. It is the morning after the night before, people, and the fish tank is looking good. I added a little bit of filter floss last night just to get rid of any fine particulate matter. Oh, let me just hammer up, as you can see here. So as water passes through that, it'll pick up any little tiny bits floating around and make the clarity a little bit better. And boom, look at that. That is one sexy looking tank if I do say so myself so this is totally ready to rock and roll now um I'm gonna go and get the fish today please don't get alarmed um you know he's putting fish in the next day rah, 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 rah. Uh, I am putting fish in the next day but I'm also going to seed this with some premature biological media that I've be taking from a um, fish tank that I've got downstairs I'll show you that process um, by chucking in that bio media it already has a really decent population of the bacteria that we want to break down the fish's waste. Also, the pH of this tank is really low, so any ammonia that the fish do produce and the bacteria can't initially break down um, will be in the form of ammonium. Uh, I'll do a separate video on that, I won't get too geeky now. So the non-toxic form of ammonia. So as far as this fish tank is concerned, it is ready for a pair of Epistogramma McMasteri, and I am super excited. So I'll take my son, uh, I have no doubt he will be the star of this video. But the next time I see you, we'll be in the shop. Peace. <laughs> Ray, are we going to go get some cool fish today? Sure. Yeah? Yeah? Should we not tell mummy the price, yeah? You remember, remember the rule about the price. No telling mama. No no tell mama. <laughs> no telling <the> mama. <laughs> yeah, you get <laughs> Good boy. Ray, where's our fish? Where's our fish? <laughs> He's not wrong. That is where they are. <gasps> where are they? Oh, there he is. Hello, mate. Whoa. What big a fish. fish. Big, oh. Is that a really big fish? Where's the really big fish? Yeah. Big, big, big fish? Yeah. Big, oh. big fish? It's a huge fish. Rafe, where is he? Big fish. Oh. oh, is he biting your finger? Oh, wow, look at that. He is a big fish, isn't he? Big fish. Do you big want him, Rafe? Fish. We can put him in your pepper pig tank. So just back from the fish shop, um, I am going to drip these guys in. So I bought, obviously I bought the pair of Epistos. That would, otherwise this whole video would <laughs> be a bit weird. Um, I bought the pair of Epistos and I also bought six uh blue emperor tetras so they are a stunning fish these guys are really small um but when they get bigger uh give them a year or so they will be absolutely gorgeous um so they both came from the same system uh it's a soft a soft water system at the shop so uh, always ask about um the ph you know the, and the water hardness that the fish are currently in when you're when you're buying fish from a shop so that you can uh pay attention um in terms of if they're coming from a hard water system and you're going to put them in a soft water system at home um it's going to take longer to acclimatize them uh, I, I, it's not just temperature that we're trying to equalize here 
it's um, a concophony of things and it's all water parameters involved. So what I'm going to be doing is, if I turn my camera around, I am going to drip mine in. So I've got an airline here and my trusty pot uh, and a little knot in it. So what I'll do is I will remove as much water as I possibly can from the bags uh, in the system um, of, of the fish rather. Gently take these out. You can just see the male's caudal fin there, the bright orange, looking amazing. So let's get him down here, nice and gently. Plugging Maidenhead Aquatics, my local ones, very good. I've got some really knowledgeable people in there. And it's all about the staff in my opinion, and obviously the health of the fish and the way that they maintain the systems. So these are the blue emperors. I'm looking forward to um, getting them in there. They'll colour up really nicely in the soft water. Um, they'll act as a diver fish as well, so they'll swim around and distract the epistos a little bit, and sometimes that can encourage spawning. Um, also, it'd be a bit bleak if it was just a tank of two fish. So they're going to go in there today as well. So I will get this set up and start dripping. And as if by magic, they are in there. So as you can see, drip, 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 drip. Slowly over about a sort of half an hour to an hour's period, um, I'm mixing the system water that all of these fish came from with the tank water. So I can leave this. I'll put something over the top of it, um, just in case you get any jumpers. But I will go and have my lunch and revisit this in a bit. Um, yeah, and then we'll be almost ready to rock and roll. Exciting times. So this is the tank that I'll be taking out the mature biological media from. Like I said, it's been there about four to six months. Uh, a quite nice sort of heavily stocked tank. Bit of a zoom in there. So we've got some interesting fish in there, but we will talk about those another time. So what I'm, all I'm doing, quite simply put, is I'll take the floss out. That can be changed later more mechanical rather than biological. Get me sponge, lift it up. Oh, I'll take my light out. Lift it up, take out my bio rings. So on there, lots of nice bacteria. Kickstart the other tank and away we go. I'll also, put in a little bit of water from this tank because although it's technically a benthic bacteria they'll also lives on the surface there'll also be bacteria in the water so as I do a water change on this tank today take it two liters out chuck it in the main tank and then that gives it an extra bit of um, biological kickstart so we're looking for our nitrosomonas and nitrobacter species of bacteria winner so as you can see I've left it an hour and a half so um, these guys uh, well and truly uh, mixed up. I've actually been pouring some of this water into a jug and throwing it away um, and then letting it fill back up. So they've been well and truly mixed. Now I've got to tip them into a net and put them in. So my lovely assistant um, will wait here while I go and tip these down the, the sink. Well, not the fish, the water. Nice and quick. Chuck them in there. Bang. And they are in their new home. So I won't turn the light on for a couple of hours. Wow, those textures are going to look good when they start colouring up. So yeah, we'll leave them in there a couple of hours. And then we'll turn the light on a little bit later on. And in a nutshell, that's it. Right, so had these fish a couple of days now. Um, super happy with them. They're eating really well. Coming out. Being a bit more brave, look at him. Woo! A lot of uh, dominance behaviour over the female. Keeps giving her a swipe now and again. Wow, look at that. What a fish. I mean, the female's lovely, but you can never take that away from the male. Look at that. He is the star of the show. Hard to focus here. There we go. Good lad. I'm being quiet because Rafe's in bed. But as you can see, he's eating his blood worm quite happily. 
at that. That orange extends right onto his dorsal, which is lovely. It's got these amazing blue markings around his face as well. He's just such a cool fish. And look at his caudal fin, his tail fin. That yellow and orange, oh, that red and orange. Lovely. Tank's looking good. Really happy with the way that that's turned out. The Tetris, as you can see, they've colored up. They're gonna be even harder to film. Do my best to get one in shot. There's female at the back as well. Oh, there's, as his head, head appears. So he's paying a lot of attention to her. What I'll be doing is I will, uh, I've got for my Crebensis, I've got a pair of Crebensis in my big tank. Um, I've got a nice little uh, ceramic cave. So I'm gonna buy these guys one of those and get them, yeah, get them in there. I suspect they probably will spawn. I'm not necessarily um, too fussed if they don't for the first couple of months, it would be nice. But um, let's get them conditioned up, get them coloured up properly. Um, I still think this male's got some uh, colour to gain, which will be absolutely awesome. Yeah, and if we can get some babies, that'd be great. And I'll do a separate video on that. But yeah, I'll order them a spawning pot tonight and we'll see, see what happens. Also, most likely going to put my peacock gudgeon and my blue steel killifish in here as well. So they'll just act as a bit more, a bit more distraction, um, potentially stop him being, get, getting too aggressive with her, um, and create some nice sort of defensive behavior. There it goes. Wow, he's eating like it's going out of fashion. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Now, only one of my fish has actually uh, been named and that is my African reed fish next door, who you will meet at some point. His name is Big Tone. Um, but if anyone in the comments wants to name this pair, then I will pick my favorite name, or the funniest probably. There she is, there's the female. So a bit more drab, she has actually got some nice blue, um, metallic blue on her face. I don't know if you can see it in this video, maybe a little bit of a f flicker of it. But no. So yeah. If you can think of a name, I'll be more than happy to name them that. But in terms of the tank, the fish, the setup, um, I, yeah, I genuinely couldn't be happier with it. Okay, back again. <laughs> I can't help myself. Final update, I promise, because I'm not going to touch this tank for a while. I'll probably, in a week or so, or two weeks' time, get uh, another load of uh, small Tetras or something like that. Um, but for now, this is it. This is the final iteration. I promise. As you can see, I've added quite a few more plants from the tank downstairs. Um, and I've also added some really cool fish as well. So fish that I like to look at, um, which makes sense for me because they're, um, uh, I'm going to be looking at this all day. So what have I done? Uh, I've obviously brought my Anubias in, a load of crypts uh, and a couple of other plants. Uh, I brought my peacock gobies, um, or gudgeons, sorry, they're not technically a goby, um, from downstairs. They're really cool, really like those, quite hard to focus on them. Shoddy camera work. Uh, what else have I done? I brought in my pair of African blue steel killifish. The male is up there. That is a stunning fish. It was a crying shame having him downstairs where I, you know, maybe looked at him twice a day. Now I can keep a super close eye on him. Obviously the Epistos, they're in there, being their uh, peculiar selves. Um, yeah, they've, they've done really well. They're eating pellets or dry foods rather. They're eating dry food and they're eating frozen food, uh, which is fantastic. Makes my life a lot easier when they eat dry food. So I don't have to constantly try to frost something or even worse, try and play around with live food. Um, that would be a nightmare. They've even got a little, uh, spawning cave in there. It's, I ordered a bigger one than that. They do, they can both fit in there. They both have been in there. Um, but ideally they need a little bit bigger. So I have got one. I will put it in at some point. Mr. Killifish, if I move around the tank, is he just going to swim away? Let's have a look. Focus, focus, come on. Okay, I think he's in focus. Typical. 
What a cool fish. I bought him as a juvenile, so he's only just started to colour up. Um, but yeah, and the female is in there somewhere too, so. I think they have actually laid eggs uh, downstairs, in the downstairs tank. But yeah, so he's really cool. I'll do another video, um, probably just on killifish, because I absolutely love killifish. And they're a bit of a sort of connoisseur's fish. Once you keep killifish, you kind of um, you get these people, uh, these aquarists, to just keep keeping them and almost sort of go killifish specific. So many different species, so colourful, um, really nice variation. Their life cycles are very different as well, depending on where they're from, etc. Um, a really, really cool fish, but look at him, he's stunning. And the peacock goby saying, oi, look at me, I'm pretty too. Yes, you are. So I've got one male um, peacock... Uh, I keep calling them gobies, peacock gudgeon, um, and two females, but they are proving difficult to focus in on as well. So yes, last iteration, this has been a really fun project, a really nice tank. Um, all started when I saw this chap in the shop, and it really was love at first sight, and I still think he is the best looking fish I have. Um, he's gorgeous, his partner's gorgeous. Uh, where is she? Here she is come out for their bug bites which is good hello wow look at that I think that's the perfect way to end this video he's absolutely stunning I fell in love with him and this is why uh, I've been on this slightly expensive journey to get this tank but it's well worth it I work a lot uh, I sort of work what, eight to nine hours a day sat at this desk um, and having a view like this just makes it makes it that little bit more bearable so until the next time, uh, peace out.